Hello YouTube viewers and random Doctor Who fans, and welcome to the final day of my challenge to review all four of the re-released Sonic Screwdrivers. Today I'm taking a look at the re-release of River Song's Future Sonic Screwdriver, and here it is in its packaging, which looks so very, very familiar. The only difference here is that it says River Song's Future Sonic Screwdriver on the box. Other than that, it's identical to the 10th Doctor Sonic packaging. Now, I know the reason why they've included another image of David Tennant on the packaging is to tie in all of the merchandise to a specific Doctor for the 50th anniversary, and of course, this screwdriver first appeared during the 10th Doctor era, but it would have been nice all the same to have had an image of Alex Kingston on the front as well. The back has an image of the other four screwdrivers and a mountain of legal kerflurga, and that's pretty much it. For a better look at the box, watch my third Doctor Sonic screwdriver review. So that's it for the packaging, let's open it up and take a look at the actual toy. Alrighty, here we are. The Future Sonic Screwdriver has to be one of my favourite Sonic Screwdrivers. It's up there with the Laser Screwdriver. I love its design, there's so much detail and extra features included on it, it's very aesthetically pleasing. On the top we have the Emitter Dome which has been enhanced, so therefore includes a series of ridges and isn't just rounded like the original 10th Doctor Sonic design. However, it is made from a transparent plastic here instead of being shaded either blue or red. Moving down to the head, wave amplifiers have been attached to each of these four struts around the outside, while the paint looks excellent. It's coated in gold, but some extra touches of green have been dabbed over the screwdriver in various places to give the effect of oxidised copper, which really sets it off nicely. The body continues with the oxidised motif, as you can see it's present on the activation button, which in the show was the TARDIS remote return. But I do like how the button looks like the little electronic switch used on the actual prop. Leading down from this is a translucent fluid link, which connects to the user recognition ring. The ring is very small and therefore can be difficult to slot your little finger into if you're an adult cosplayer for example. On the other side we have detailing of the master function switch and the neural relay housing. The handle has the same cracked porcelain effect as the 10th Doctor screwdriver, but is made from a dark grey plastic to signify its age. Near the base we have a series of setting dials which are detailed fairly well and include more of that green oxidised effect. The end cap is again reminiscent of the 10th Doctor's, but includes a silver end piece. So overall for detail, it's excellent, it's unique, and I love it. When it comes to features, pressing the TARDIS remote return button activates the lights and sound effects. Holding it down you can see it activates the blue LED behind the emitter, illuminating the dome, while that standard slow repetitive buzzing from the other three screwdrivers is heard. Pulling the master function key up and out allows you to access the neural relay. It's a little small compared to the actual prop, but at least character took the time to include it. If this works anything like the original release, and I'm sure it does. Pressing this silver button underneath will allow you to actually activate the neural relay and change the colour of the emitter from blue to red. So let's give it a go. Hmm, it seems to be stuck. Let me just consult the instructions. Mm hmm, uh huh, hmm. I see. Well, what do you know? No mention of those additional features. Well, I guess that's understandable as- ARE THEY FREAKING HIGH?! SERIOUSLY! NO NEURAL RELAY EFFECTS? NO RED SETTING? WHAT THE HELL?! WHY?! WHY WOULD YOU REMOVE THOSE AWESOME FEATURES FOR THIS RE-RELEASE CHARACTER?! IT MAKES NO SENSE! THOSE WERE SOME OF THE COOLEST SELLING POINTS OF THE TOY IN THE FIRST PLACE! For those of you who are uninitiated, here's what was supposed to happen, as fortunately I still have my original 2008 version. Pressing and holding that silver button for a few seconds would cause a little green LED inside the screwdriver to begin pulsating, illuminating the five neural relay bars for about 10 seconds. This was awesome, as it allowed kids to reenact the final scene from Forest of the Dead, where the Doctor runs all the way to the library data core to save River Song. And from a collector's point of view, Sure, the relay bars don't start to turn off one by one like in the episode, but I was just so happy the character had decided to put so much effort into the little details of their toy. But that's not all. Pressing the button quickly would allow you to change the colour of the screwdriver's emitter. You could actually switch from the standard blue setting to the red setting. And with the red setting, the sound effect changed as well, to that higher pitched scanning noise.
But those two epic features are gone now, and all we're left with is a fixed silver button, a reminder of what once was such an excellent feature in such an excellently designed screwdriver toy. Changing the batteries is simple enough. You grab the end cap and twist it slightly so it can be slid off, revealing the battery compartment. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew and remove the top panel to access the batteries. Fortunately, three button cell batteries come pre-installed in the toy. Doing a size comparison, you can see the Future Sonic is around the same size as the 10th Doctor screwdriver, while being smaller than the Laser, 11th, 3rd and 4th Doctor screwdrivers, but it's much bigger than the Sonic lipstick. As this is supposed to be an older version of the 10th Doctor screwdriver, here we have both toys side by side, and as you can see, the scale is a little bit off. The Future Sonic is far smaller and thinner, while the handle is much shorter, and the emitter head is completely off scale. I have no idea why Character went for a completely different design with this toy, as they could have easily just incorporated elements and measurements from their previously released 10th Doctor Sonic. So, overall, what do I think of this toy? Well, I love it. Its detail and features are incredible, and it's easily one of my favourite Sonic toys. But this isn't 2008 anymore. Welcome to the recession, people. It's five years later, and even toys are feeling the effects. So much so that one of my all-time favourite Sonic screwdrivers has been given a botched re-release, which lacks some of its most impressive features. While I'll agree that the detail remains untouched, and as a display model it works perfectly, the fact that Character have decided to release it minus the extra features has been a crushing disappointment for fans who were looking forward to picking one up at such a cheap price. But I guess you just get what you pay for these days. And I thought the 10th Doctor Sonic screwdriver was lacking when it came to features. What makes it even worse is that the emitter dome was left clear during the initial run, as it had to accommodate for the LED colour change. But now, seeing as the Sonic only lights up blue, why not mould the lens from blue plastic? It just feels so cheap and lazy. Heck, while they're at it, they should have just glued that neural relay panel down to really hit home the idea that the toy offers no additional features. It's a stupid idea, which should have been made much clearer in the marketing materials, and is definitely going to leave a very sour taste in fans' mouths. So that brings me to the end of this review, and to the end of this look at the re-release Sonics. Yeah, for the most part, it's nice for Doctor Who fans to be able to get their hands on them again, as they've become so rare now, and therefore very expensive and hard to find. But it had to come with a price. And at 9 99 each, we had to know there would have to have been some downside. While the 3rd and 4th Dr. Sonics are pretty much exact re-releases with the same faults they had initially, the lack of any type of pen nib and the UV LED on the 10th Dr. Sonic was very annoying. But the Future Sonic really takes the cake. To re-release a toy minus the features it had in its original release is just insulting. It's worse. It's annoying. It's hurtful. It makes me so angry. What the hell are character doing? First they replaced the 5 inch figures with crappy 3 and 3 quarter inch figures, and now this? That's it. That's it. They have to be stopped. And I've got to stop them. Eh! Ah, there you are. You're gonna pay for what you've done. I'm in case you get something. I'm getting out of here. Oh, no, you don't! Get back here! Hi, David! I am not dealing with this today. Get up! You've got nowhere left to go! Eh, my guess, you guess? What are you gonna do? Seriously? You're going down, character options. It's over.